Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It is Monday morning. It is April 8th. Today is the day of the long-awaited and hyped solar eclipse. People are traveling from all over to end up in that line of totality. Um, there's all sorts of bulletins being put out about not looking directly into it because you'll go blind, not looking into it while you're driving because you'll go blind and then cause an accident. Um, there's going to be tons of traffic across the entire country because of this. So I feel like the eclipse is going to cause a lot. That's not fair. The eclipse is not going to cause a lot of bad things to happen. People not knowing how to act and insisting on being frenzied and losing all common sense, probably going to cause a lot of bad stuff to happen today. Um, so I'm very content to just be sitting at home throughout the situation. It's meant to start in a couple of hours. We're going to be actually in therapy when it begins. We will be finished with therapy by the time it's at its peak here, but we're not even going to achieve like 50% totality here. That being the case though, or rather all the same, I'm not super interested in going out and trying to see it. I showed you guys in the last episode, which I'll go ahead and post up here because I already edited that one and I know it's gone up. Um, I showed you guys that my mom got us all solar eclipse glasses and she even got me this cool filter that you put over your camera lens so that you could take a picture of the thing without wrecking your camera. And so I might go as far as attempting to take a picture of it depending on how easily I can access the sun from my patio, but if I'm not able to do that, then that's that. That's the extent that I'm willing to go to, to um, experience the eclipse myself in any capacity, because the possibility for things going wrong is just too high for me to balance out the, well, at least I'll get to say I experienced this eclipse. Eclipses happen multiple times a year. It's not, I mean, we rarely get to see a totality um, in America, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But regardless, like I said, where I am, I'm not experiencing that anyways. So for the most part, it's just a typical day. <sighs> or it's meant to be anyways, and that's the energy that I'm going into it with. We do have one therapy today. It's in a couple hours. Kiddo has been in a really good mood today, but he's kind of doing his own thing, so I'm letting him. I've done a ton of laundry. I made us both breakfast. I fed the Lizards. They're doing good. They're super calm this morning, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so, so far so good as far as a start to the week. I have restarted watching Seeking Sister Wife. Um, or Seeking Sister Wives. I think it's Seeking Sister Wife, singular. I was watching this show when it came out, and I think I watched it all through season three. And then for whatever reason, I just stopped watching it. I don't know if it's that they took too long between seasons and I lost interest or what happened. But season four came and went, and I never watched it. And now they're apparently on season five, and it's just chaos. So seeing all the buzz about it online got me re-interested, but I figured I can't just jump into the current season if I haven't seen season four. And then I thought, well, how am I supposed to go into season four if I don't even really remember what happened in season three? So I started all the way back at season two, and the only reason I didn't start at season one is because HBO Max does not have season one available. But that's fine. I pretty much remember what happened. They do a good job catching you up in the so here's what happened last time segment at the beginning and man this show is so freaking cringe like like i understand signing up for something because you want to spread your message because you want to tell people about your lifestyle and you want to destigmatize it normalize it i'm with that a hundred percent but not everybody is built to be on camera um some people have a hard enough time talking one-on-one -on -one with a person and a lot of these people on this show, you can feel that they're like in physical pain being put on the spot, being the center of attention, having to direct themselves to a camera while doing like interviews and stuff. It's 
painful to them. So it almost, A, kind of makes you feel bad for them, and B, makes you wonder, did you not consider any of this when you signed up for this? I understand, again, spreading your message is important, but if you are not able to effectively communicate your message while you have the opportunity to be on camera, you're not getting your message across. And in fact, it's just really distracting because all I can think about is like, man, this this person really would just rather be anywhere but here right now, huh? So whatever. I just finished the first episode of season two and I'm reminded of just how cringe this show is. <laughs> but it's a train wreck, you can't look away. So I'm gonna, you know, it's just something I have on the TV basically while I'm doing other things around the house. <sighs> So yeah, that's how my day's gonna go today. I've already done a ton, actually. I had a bunch of like, um, I had to reach out to my doctor, I had to reach out to my son's doctor, and I've been doing that all morning, and like that's been super productive. I edited that video that I mentioned earlier. Um, just set a bunch of things in motion that I have to do this week that are like step by step, you know, a lot of stuff going on to get from A to B. A lot of those things, the process has begun and I'm just waiting for someone to get back to me or for somebody else to do their part before I can do my part again and so on and so on. So I'm feeling good about today, feeling good about this morning so far. There's my phone reminding me to drink water, which is a good thing because I've not yet done that today. Um, but yeah, if anything else happens, I will let you guys know. Um, I'll update you actually on whether or not I do experience any part of the eclipse, etc. And if you got to experience the eclipse in any capacity, I would love for you to let me know how that went in the comments. But for now, happy Monday. Just through, please, the next 40 seconds. <laughs> if you're on the ground, it's a powerful enough telescopes might be able to see those ejections happening. Oh, here we go. Orbits out of, or satellites out of orbit. It's why Skylab fell early back in 79 with solar activity. Y'all, I came out here to get some footage of the sun, but it's so cloudy out that I don't think it's really gonna make a difference that I have this filter on the lens. I'm gonna take the filter off now. So this is what it looks like, peak in Miami. It's not going to get any eclipse here than this. And yeah, I just see clouds. And when I put my glasses on and tried to look up to find the sun, I saw nothing, just dark. There's some good ass glasses. I can't see anything in them. So hopefully y'all are getting a better view than I got, but there's not a whole lot of anything going on around here. And this is peak. I can see it through my glasses and it looks really cool my mom told me to come outside that the clouds had parted and yeah so there you go i experienced it it looks like it's moving really fast too hopefully i actually recorded something because that was actually my second attempt at that and i can't see a thing through these glasses okay i just looked at that clip and you can't see anything in that clip either i promise it was there i promise it looked super cool i'm gonna insert a picture that my cousin took um, because it's the best real life picture locally that I've seen so far. So this is what it looked like through the glasses, basically, because it, it looked almost identical. And I'm um, sorry I couldn't bring you actual footage of it, but I'm sure wherever you are, you probably saw it in some capacity, right? Good morning, friends. It is Tuesday morning, right? Yes, Tuesday comes after Monday. It's Tuesday morning. Um, I woke up feeling good again today, which is really, really nice. I've gotten a really big jump on my morning things. So now I'm kind of just coasting until we have our first therapy. Kiddo's still asleep though. So I do have to wake him up eventually if he doesn't wake up on his own so that he has time to have breakfast and get dressed and everything before we get going. I'm continuing my Seeking Sister Wives. I don't know if I'd call it a binge. I'm literally just letting it play while I'm doing other things. This season, season two, because I mentioned yesterday that they don't have season one anywhere, um, but season two, I saw whenever it aired. So currently I'm on episode seven, and I'm only kind of dropping in, tuning in every once in a while, 
but I kind of remember what all happens with each of these people. So it's fine. Um, in the next episode, or the next season rather, I might have to pay a little more attention because I'm pretty sure I saw season three. But there's a lot of new families in season three. So whatever. Not a big deal at all. But that's where I'm at right now as far as that. Um, last night, I... We were hanging out on the couch, my husband and I, while Kiddo was already in bed, and my husband has a very elaborate bedtime routine for Mushu. Eventually, hopefully, once the little one's tamed down enough, she'll participate in the bedtime routine as well. Well, separately, obviously. We'll do one and then the other, because they can't really be together. But there's this, this whole routine where he takes Mushu out of the warm spot of the cage, because there's a warm side and a, and a cooler side. He brings them to the couch. They cuddle under a blanket. Mushu loves being tucked in. It's the most adorable thing. And they hang out there until Mushu falls asleep, which is pretty much no time at all. Like at this point, Mushu's come to associate the routine with sleep to the point that as soon as he lays down on my husband, he's out. But usually my husband will hang out with him for a little while. And then eventually he'll get up, take him back to the tank, put him into the cool side of the tank where his hammock is to sleep and Mushu will even kind of shuffle his way so that he can fit into the hammock just like he likes with one of his legs stretched out over the side and it's adorable. Last night for whatever reason he decided he didn't want to go with my husband he wanted to go with me and he's really liking this little part of my like chest shoulder area so he was hanging out up here for a while he fell asleep I had to get up because I had to go start Kiddo's shower and... Right, because yeah, at that point Kiddo wasn't in the shower yet. He was hanging out in the back, but he was not in the shower yet. I had to get up and put Kiddo in the shower. So <clears throat> I tell my husband, take Mushu please so that I can get going and do all this stuff. And he did not want to get off me. Every time that my husband would try to grab him, he would wiggle his way back or he would straight up jump back on me. So I said, okay, well, I gotta put, I gotta put him down. If he doesn't want to, maybe he just doesn't want to go with you for whatever reason, but I have to put him down. So I took him to his tank and instead of getting in position to get in his hammock, he kept coming back and just laying his belly on my hand like this and falling back asleep or at least pretending to be asleep. Although I'd hate to think he's being that manipulative, but the point is I cried. I cried a lot just because I love him so freaking much and that was so cute and I just couldn't stand it. So we got a sling, you guys might have seen it in the last episode perhaps, but we got Mushu a sling and a leash and so my husband was like, relax, like it's fine, everything's fine, why don't you just put him in a sling for bedtime? So I did. I carried Mushu around while I got the shower ready for kiddo while well, I got kiddo's bed like made and put his pajamas out and all that I had Mushu on me the whole time and then I told my husband please you be the one that takes him out of the sling and puts him in bed because I can't take it if he does this to me again and then he was fine but I don't know why that just like hit me so hard like oh my god he's just so great I just love this guy so freaking much so yeah anyway I'm a fully sane and rational person obviously We've got two therapies today. I've already done the laundry today, which is great. Like, that's done. Um, I want to edit a video and probably, like, just finish prepping it. Like, do the whole thing. I already recorded it, but do all of the things that it takes to get it ready for YouTube because this video is actually the one that's meant to come out this weekend. And usually I'm, like, two or three weeks ahead. But this was like a last minute collab. I ended up scrapping the video that, or not scrapping it, but moving it to another date that I had set for this weekend so that I could participate in this collab. But that means that because I recorded it last minute, I still haven't edited it or prepared it in any way. So I wanna try to do the whole thing today just so that it's ready and I don't have to think about it anymore. Today, or tonight rather, I have to set out all of the boxes that are gonna be picked up for donation because most of the time when I've called for donations, they arrive like at 8 in the morning. Like the stuff is gone before we even look outside. Sometimes not. It's been There's been a couple times where it's been to like, you know, 11 a.m. or even like 2 p.m. and the stuff is still out there. But I don't want to chance it. So I want to make sure to put all the stuff out there tonight so that if they do arrive before we're even up, that's fine. They can take their stuff and get going and everybody continues on with their day. 
I have a couple phone calls I need to make, but what else is new? I have to go drop off something at UPS. A bunch of little things, but it should all be quite manageable. So I'll bring you all along for what I remember to bring you all along for. I'll give you updates where applicable. And for now, happy Tuesday. How fun is this? This right here in the middle of this spider plant, which by the way, I've only had this spider plant for, let's say a year, probably a little less than that, but let's just go ahead and call it a year. It's gone ahead and sprouted this different looking thing in the center here, right? And you go down, down, down. It's got a bunch of little leaflets and stuff. And then all of this down here at the bottom, it's got a few little babies. So those I can snip. I'm going to wait till they get a little bigger, but I can snip these and turn these all into brand new plants, which is actually how I got that first one. I snipped it, threw it in dirt, and it became all of this. But I noticed today that it's got some flowers on it. And apparently, according to Google, your spider plant flowering is like the highest possible compliment that your spider plant can give you because apparently they only flower when they're under perfect conditions, like just the right amount of sun, just the right amount of water, their enclosure, right? Their, their pot is just the right size, it's just the right amount of soil, etc., etc. So only under basically ideal conditions do you get flowers on your spider plant. So this is a spider plant's way of letting you know, hey man, I'm doing great. I could not be doing better. And that's super exciting for me because I've never had one of these before. Kiddo's right there on the iPad. I'm not going to ask him to turn it down, so hopefully y'all are okay with that. Uh, Disney just made an announcement that in about a month, they're going to change the Disability Access Pass yet again. They make changes to this every once in a while, every few, you know, every two to four years, let's say on average. And... They're never good changes. They're certainly never changes that make it more easy or more accessible for the people that need them to use. It's never changes for the better. Uh, and of course, I have thoughts, obviously. So the changes that are happening is, first of all, the wording of the change, the wording of the, the release that they put out, basically sends something to the effect of if you don't have autism or other cognitive disabilities, you're not able to use this pass at all. So here's the problem with that. Um, the fact that they specifically said autism and other disabilities, everybody is jumping on autistic people now and attacking autism and saying that's not fair and that's only a disability in such a way. What about my disability? So they're basically jumping on the autistic community because of Disney's poor choice of words when autistic people don't want this. They don't, nothing about this is good for autistic people. So like stay in your lane. Like think about, think about who the actual enemy is here and direct your ire that way. Um, starting there. Secondly, um, which by the way, I don't want to be that guy, but just so y'all know, uh, that's what the DAS pass is originally for. It's for people with cognitive disabilities. If you have physical disabilities, there's all sorts of accommodations that you can make. Like for example, if you need a wheelchair, every single line is wheelchair accessible. And the ones that aren't, they let you in through the back or they let you in some other sort of sh secret shortcut way. Um, so there's really not a need for a DAS if you have a physical disability. I know that there are some physical disabilities, like let's say if you have Crohn's disease or s something like that, where you can physically stand in line, but you might not be able to stand in the entire line because you might have to run off to the bathroom at any time. They're apparently integrating some sort of like return to the line pass. I'm not sure how that's going to work. They haven't said how that's going to work. But the point I'm trying to make is that they're not excluding y'all entirely and saying you're on your own. They are making accommodations. That bit there I feel makes sense because just because you have a disability, accommodations are not a blanket thing. Every person is going to have what they need in order to be accommodated. It's about equity, not equality. You don't all need to jump into the lightning lane line because you have a disability. Let me know what you need and we will go from there. But 
that part I get. I also kind of want to know what those accommodations are going to be because the more I talk to people about it, the more it's come to my attention that let's say you do have Crohn's, you have to leave the line in an emergency. Um, how are you going to get out of that line? How are you going to fight a crowd of 800 people that are winding back and forth a line to find a cast member to help you to let them know, hey, I've got this condition. I need to leave the line. What comes next? Maybe they have to give you a card to return. Maybe they have to give you something. But all of that is taking time out of your emergency that was bad enough to leave the line. And so they're going to have to come up with a hell of an accommodation if they're going to kick these people with these conditions off the DAS. That's my two cents. Now here's where I have a problem. They are making it so that you can't get a pass in the park anymore. You have to do it online. I have not minded getting the passes online the last couple times we've had to do it, but lately you have to sometimes wait five to nine to 12 hours just sitting at your computer on hold in order to talk somebody to do this. That's mm. not possible. That's not, like literally the mm. whole point of this pass is we can't wait around for whatever reason, but then you expect us to sit in front of the computer for the entire day, sun up to sun down, trying to get help for this accommodation. Ridiculous. So if that's what they're trying to do, they need to hire more people, they need to figure something out, but that's not accommodating. And that's the whole point of this. They're also making it so that you can only use it for immediate family and they're putting a limit of four people including the person that has the pass so basically the disabled person plus three guests my mom and my sister and my nephews and everybody they're gonna go actually um, in this coming week to the parks and the reason I didn't go with them even though I was invited is because my son plus me plus them would have been seven people and my son's disability pass would have only covered six of us so i didn't think that that was fair to have to exclude any one person from any given ride because if we're all doing the fast pass for example and then somebody is left out then they have to either make the entire line themselves or just straight up not right. That's not cool. I didn't want to be the reason that anybody was put in that position. And my son can't just sit in the lines. He just can't. So either we all go with his pass or we don't go because he's not going to be able to all just sit in the line with everybody else. He won't, it, it, he can't. So I removed myself from the situation so that they could just go and do their thing. Under this new rule, even if it would have been six of us, they still wouldn't have given us the pass because my sister is not my immediate household. My mom, my parents even, are not my immediate household. We bought our annual passes because the intention was my parents, me and my husband, and my son, so there's five of us, could go into the parks always use my son's pass because that's the accommodation he needs etc etc now with this new rule my parents are not going to be covered even though even let's say it's just me my parents and my son so there's four of us my parents might not be covered it's up to their discretion whether they let my parents in or not because they're not minor children in my household that being the case that almost like breaks the contract that we made. We bought these annual passes because at the time we bought them, the intention was that we were all going to go together to the parks for the next year and use the accommodations that are required in order to make that possible. If you're going to remove those accommodations, then us going to the park is no longer possible. And that's because of you, Disney, not because of us. So what happens here? They're not going to refund us for our passes. Um, they don't care that we can't go or can't use this so what happens right they're alienating a bunch of people right now i know they don't care they don't give a sh they just want to spend you know they want to make money um and we're just one family or or a lot of families actually they're gonna be alienated by this but that's fine because there's always somebody willing to go and pay and as long as they're making their money they don't care that brings me to the other thing. This is all basically a cash grab. A lot of people are saying, well, this is a good thing because there's been a big uptick in, in the disability pass usage in the last handful of years. 
And if everybody's got the pass, then nobody has the pass, right? Because nobody's getting the accommodation of not having to wait around in the line. If everybody's just sitting around, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? Like, what I was trying to say that I couldn't find the words for in the moment is that the way that the DAS works is that they give you a time to return to the line. And instead of doing the full line, because you've already waited, you go in through the lightning lane pass, which is still a line. It's just much shorter of a line. So if everybody has the pass, then everybody's using the lightning lane and then there's no actual like that lightning lane is not like any faster than the original line. So it's still the exact same line plus the time you already waited. It's just that the line is shifting from the quote unquote standby to the lightning lane. But if it's the same amount of people in either line, then it's not really an accommodation. It doesn't actually help anybody to use it. The thing is, is that yes, there are always people that fake. There are, there always has been. That's what happened the last time they made a change. It used to be called the guest access card or the guest accessibility card, something like that. And the reason they changed it is because people were hiring. Look how atrocious this is. People were hiring tour guides with Down syndrome so that, and I don't mean tour guides like from Disney. I mean, they were literally just saying, hey, person with Down syndrome, can I pay you to come with me and my family to Disney? Because with your disability, now we can get this all access pass because it used to be a front of the line pass. It's not like that anymore. It's not the advantage that people think it is. Um, yeah, it used to be that you literally would show up with your guest access card and they would let you into the, the, the ride right then and there. So people were hiring disabled people so that they could get this front of the line card. It's not to that extent anymore, but people are definitely stretching their disabilities. They're definitely trying to get away with using physical disabilities um, to get a DAS when using a wheelchair would be sufficient. Things like that. It could also be the fact that in the last four years, five years, there has been a mass global event that's caused more people to become disabled. Could be that. But I think likelier it's just that when there were free fast passes, people did not feel the need to try to fake as much as they are now because the DAS is free for now, right? Um, but when there were free fast passes, people would just use the fast passes and not have to look for other ways to cheat the system and get around things. Now that you have to pay for Genie Plus to get any sort of skip the line kind of advantage, now people are looking for ways to beat the system and not have to pay. So if Disney would bring back free fast passes, um, even if it's just one or two a day, something, something to alleviate the the stress basically of doing a Disney vacation at this point, people would not feel like they had to fake disabilities to get these passes. I'm not giving them any justification. I'm not saying that it's right what they're doing. On the contrary, it's terrible because their fakery is making it harder for my son who actually needs these accommodations to access these accommodations. But what I'm saying is, is that this is all being caused. I thought he was coughing. He's fake laughing right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, so their, their fakery is making it harder for people that actually need the accommodations to access these accommodations. But yeah, again, if Disney would maybe ease up on the, the money grubbing and all of that, we wouldn't be here at all, right? So um, overall, this is not a good thing for anybody. Um, I don't think long term it's going to be a good thing for Disney. Um, certainly they're not looking very good right now. It's not going to be good for the people that have the disabilities that need this pass. It's not good for families like ours that need more than four people on their pass. Otherwise, literally, why go to the park? It's not possible for us to go to the park and use our passes that are already paid for. It's not good necessarily for anybody that's not disabled because it doesn't affect you one way or the other. Um, so you have no dog in this fight you should not have an opinion period if you have an opinion you're entitled to one but you're going to sound like it and i'm telling you that right now you really like this that's definitely a stay in your lane situation you have zero to do with any of this i honestly don't care what you have to say period um but yeah so i'm i'm honestly expecting some sort of walk back from disney i'm expecting that even if they don't say surprise never mind we're not doing anything I'm sure that they're going to, at the very least, tweak what they're going to do. These, um, 
guidelines or, or whatever that they're issuing today, they don't go into effect until like mid-May or late May. But I really do feel like considering how quickly and how big the pushback has been like immediately because this is just not good. This is not okay. Um, I'm really, really expecting, honestly, I could be wrong, I hope I'm not, but I'm really expecting that Disney's gonna be like, okay, 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 guys, we heard you, and this is what we're gonna do instead. But I guess it remains to be seen. So, that's, that's a thing that's going on right now. This is gonna be a long video, guys, I'm sorry. And also, there's a fly that keeps running around. I'm sure you've seen it 15 times. What are you gonna do? I forgot to tell you guys yesterday, we came up with a name. Her name is gonna be Pepper because she has a spicy personality. She's always trying to attack us and because she's red and that way I can call her Baby or Bebita or all sorts of <laughs> other little cute names. So her name is officially Pepper. And it took long enough because today is one month that we've had her, so officially. She has a name now. Hello friends, it is Wednesday morning and it always happens, right? It strikes again. Um, last night, kiddo did not go to bed until past 1 a.m. and I ended up knocking out on the couch watching Good Eats, which is something I hadn't done since I was like a teenager. Usually, I'm on the couch on my phone, on my phone, on my phone, but lately I've actually been experiencing carpal tunnel type uh, symptoms, which is scary, not great. Um, my mom had to have surgery for carpal tunnel a few years ago and I am not wanting to go down that same path. So I decided I'm gonna put down my phone and even though I'm not used to that, like when I'm watching TV, when I'm watching a movie, whatever, I still always have my phone on me, which is awful. But that's a whole other thing. I decided I'm gonna put the phone down and I'm just gonna put on something that I know that I can just watch and be entertained. But if I doze off, it's not a big deal because there's no like storyline to follow. So I googled Good Eats because I had already been thinking about it. I made up a curriculum for my son for like cooking, life skills, chemistry, science, etc. In 2016, when he was four years old, um, with the idea that one day when he's about middle school aged, I can implement this curriculum. He's about middle school age now. So I was already thinking yesterday how like, I really need to dig up that curriculum I did, by the way, um, that I wrote out, however, almost a decade ago, and see if I start like planning it out, how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna implement it. Maybe I can make a video series out of it, maybe not. I don't know if that would be something interesting to anybody else but me. But I just started watching it, I dozed off, it was very nice. And then I thought to myself, once he finally fell asleep and I was getting myself up to go to bed, I thought, thank goodness tomorrow's Wednesday because we don't have anything scheduled early so I can actually sleep in tomorrow. I double checked that my alarm was off and it wasn't gonna wake me up by mistake or anything. He's been up since six. <laughs> so it always happens on days that I know and I'm looking forward to, I don't have to wake up early tomorrow, I can sleep in, I'm sleeping in, I know I am. Yeah, surprise. So he's in a great mood though. He's hanging out underneath the dining room table, uh, playing with his books, listening to music, having a blast, and I could not be happier with that. So all good things. I've just recorded parts one and two of a three part, I guess four part, so parts one, two, and three of a four-part grocery haul that's probably gonna go up next week, I think. Um, I say four parts because it's three different stores that I shopped at, but also I'm including like an in-depth meal plan to go along with the groceries. Like this is what I'm eating all week and this is the ingredients I'm using for each given meal. And if a recipe that's been on the channel is included, this is where you can find that recipe in case you wanna cook along with me. All that's happening. I'm just waiting for the last shipment, if you will, to come through. Speaking of, when I was out there picking up my second pile of groceries of the morning, uh, the donation people showed up and they did take 12 box, 11 boxes and one bag of stuff away from my house. So that's very, very exciting. That stuff is gone now. And I feel like I can breathe a little easier. Yeah, it's not even 10 a.m. and it's just been a super, super productive day. So, do I wish I'd gotten more rest? 
yes. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is, we're making the best of it. Um, actually, I do have some things scheduled today when I typically don't. In a few hours, I'm supposed to be doing that online meeting to meet my son's brand new full-time <clears throat> behavior therapist. So, that's a thing that's happening. Um, I guess I'll jump back in after that's done and let you all know how it went, the vibe I got, etc. But um, besides that, I also want to edit a video that I keep putting off because it's such a complicated, it's going to be a very complicated video to edit. But I want to just hurry up and get it over with already today so that it's not just like gnawing at my mind anymore. Mm -hmm. I would like to cut and wash his hair today, and the earlier we do that, the better, just so that it's, again, done and over with, and he can spend the rest of the day hanging out and not have that, like, it's coming, it's happening, ah. Oh. So pretty much, I'm just waiting for that last bit of groceries to come in, because I know that when I wash his hair, I typically get drenched, and my hair's gonna get wet, everything, because it's like a full body experience having to get, you know, with the shower, curtain open and the water's just pouring out and he's moving around so I don't want to have to like change my clothes and look like a disaster in the rest of that grocery haul video for continuity's sake so I'm gonna do that first then we'll cut and wash hair um, got some laundry that I need to put away and edit that video do that meeting do my workout otherwise pretty much that's my day so ha <sighs> Looking forward to the rest of it. Already gotten a lot done. And like I said, I'm feeling good. That's the most important thing. So for now, happy Wednesday. Whoa. All right, it's a little later in the day. Poor Moosh is so stressed out. He's been black bearded all morning and running up and down the glass and I have no idea what's going on. And I look over and it's that there's three, three iguanas having a party on the freaking patio. So, um, and that's been constant all day. Like I've opened the door so many times to swat lizards away today, it's out of control. But what I wanted to update you guys on, I had my meeting now with all of the ABA team and there's another freaking iguana. Yes, I see you bro, get out. So now I gotta grab the broom. That's all it takes. But I'm gonna have to do that again in about five minutes because I literally just did it, so awesome. I've even like closed the curtains most of the way so that Mushu doesn't see them come in. None of that helps because they're still obviously able to like wreck everything back there, eat my plants, etc. So, but like I'm gonna have to close them completely and like start turning on lamps and stuff in here. My power bill is gonna go up because of these iguanas. What I'm trying to say, <laughs> we had that meeting. And um, I met the new therapist. I like her. Um, she seems very nice. Um, and she's very open to like my parenting style and learning about my son and his learning style. Oh. The kiddo was present during the meeting so she got to see a little bit of his personality. And um, yeah, I have high hopes. So, so far so good. Starting next week, our schedule is going to just be, um, but it is what it is. So this is going to be the new normal now. And um, I don't know how that's going to affect other things because the last time our schedule therapy wise was this packed, my channel was not anywhere near as prolific as it currently is. And obviously, I'm not going to cut my kid's therapy schedule so I could keep up with the channel. But um, it hadn't occurred to me or I hadn't realized like just how little me time I'm going to have left when there's an extra 15 hours a week that we're doing therapy. So, something to consider. Well, kiddo has joined me sitting on my lap now. So, I'm going to stop talking. But yeah, that's the update. I'll see you guys later. Alright, my pals. It's Wednesday night. Um, I wanted to elaborate more on my feelings about the, the change to the disability pass at Disney, etc. Um, because there's been a lot of talk online and some people are saying how it's a good thing and some people are completely misconstruing the situation and like, there's just a lot of talk happening and so I almost want to like, 
respond to some of the more like ridiculous things I've seen online but also I don't quite remember what I said yesterday so I feel like the best course of action is for me to wait until I edit yesterday like the footage that I took yesterday whoa as I was saying and um, that way I can see what the hell I actually already said so that I don't get super repetitive about it and I'm sure in the next episode not only will I have more to say on the topic but I'm sure I'm assuming more will come out about it that I can respond to. Right now, some people are actually trying to do like a, a, a writing campaign, I guess, to Disney to express why this these upcoming changes don't work for them to see if Disney can maybe find some other way to, you know, to accommodate them specifically or to revamp the policy before it even goes into effect. Funny enough, Disney had forever for as long as I can remember um, they have a website that's specifically to do with disabilities and like different accommodations that they offer and how to access them and different parts of the map in each park that like accommodate different things whatever something that if you don't know it exists good for you it means nobody that you know is disabled um, but at the bottom of that page there was always a phone number and an email and they said if you have questions or concerns regarding our accommodations call this number or email us here. They were flooded so hardcore with phone calls to that number that they disconnected the number and no longer functions and they removed that from their site. So people that still have the email are emailing uh, and hoping that it's actually going to somebody and that somebody's actually reading it and taking all that stuff into account. But that's really kind of crap of Disney where they're like, complain here until there's too many of you complaining and then we're just gonna like not even give you the option. So do you want to hear what's wrong or not? Obviously not, right? Anyways, I said I was gonna talk about this some other time and here I am talking about it. Kiddo is delirious. He's exhausted. He's cracking up at absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna get him ready for bed now. Tomorrow is going to be our last hell day for now. Um, or yeah, I mean, it's going to be our last hell day. Our schedule's going to look completely different starting next week. Um, so she actually gave me the option of whether or not I wanted her to come in. And I said, yeah, go ahead and come in. I, pr I really should have said, no, that's fine. Don't worry about it. But I said, yeah, go ahead and come in because if we're going to suddenly throw more therapy at him next week, I feel like the last thing we need to do is like take therapy away right now. Um... Like, I feel like we should continue business as usual, so that way it's not such a shock. But, I don't know, now that I'm even saying it out loud, I'm thinking maybe I'll tell her, maybe not. Um, you could just stay home and don't, don't come, whatever. <laughs> I'll leave it up to her. I'll say, if you really want to, sure, and if not, then, you know what? I'll leave it up to him. We'll wait and see how he wakes up tomorrow, what kind of a mood he's in. And if it looks like he'll be fine, then cool, we'll do that. Um, that's probably the biggest thing, honestly as far as like in the next few days although technically that doesn't even really start until next week so that would be not even the next episode the one that follows in the next couple days like i said our last hell day uh friday should be business as usual and then this weekend my mom and my sister etc are all returning on sunday so that means that it's just going to be us and my dad uh, for the weekend so I'm hoping I can convince him to do something like maybe we'll go to the zoo or maybe we'll do whatever he's also been kind of like not feeling great um, he has shingles <laughs> or he was diagnosed with shingles a couple weeks ago and so he's not contagious etc but he's also not feeling his best so maybe he just wants to hang out at home and if that's what he wants to do then that's fine I just figure he's gonna be bored of just being at home all these days so we'll see how that works out but in any case that's what's going on with me I'd love to know what's going on with you how's your week been what are your plans for the weekend anything fun coming up for you any big changes coming up for you let me know it all in the comments and as always I want to thank you guys so much for being here and watching this video I really hope you enjoyed it and if you did I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up I'm simultaneously super wired from my workout and also delirious of how tired I am, so tonight's gonna be great. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click the notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye!